So, you're into animation, huh? Well, I bet you're gonna like this guy. Wait, 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 hold on a minute, hold on. Why are you here? I mean, why not this guy? Or this guy? Or why not this uh, guy? Come on, dude. Give me a break. I consider this guy a mad lad, you know what I'm saying? Well, I bet Walt Disney can do anything better than him. Shh. Okay, 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 okay. Shut your mouth. Let me introduce this guy first, okay? Okay. So... Norman McLaren was born in Stirling, Scotland on April 11, 1914. When he was 22, he left Stirling and studied set design at the Glasgow School of Art in Scotland. There, he learned the techniques of producing film. And within those years, he began experimenting different styles and techniques of filmmaking. He later moved to New York City in 1939. And during his stay in New York, he made four animated drawn-on film works. He later moved again in 1941, but this time to the land of the people of the North, also known as Canadians. Yes, yes. Because he received an invitation from John Gearson himself to work for the National Film Board or NFB. Because at the time, the NFB opened their animation studios in order to train their fellow Canadian animators. He stayed at NSB throughout his entire career until his retirement from the film board in 1984. He soon died from a heart attack at the age of 72 on January 27th, 1987. Hmm, what a life though. But I still think Disney is far better than him. <sighs> Not again. You wanna know why I consider him a mad lad? Because Disney is better than him? Wait, what? No, not that. He has a unique way of creating films, you know what I'm saying? Okay, let me ask you a question. Where would an animator draw their work? Hmm... Well, for starters, they use... paper. Correct. But this dude draws his animation directly to the film. I mean, it's kind of cool, right? Mm, yeah, you could say that. I mean, less usage of paper and, and it kind of saves the environment, you know? Okay, okay, okay. Here's another one. What's the traditional method of recording sounds? Hmm, well, you use some sort of recording device like microphones and stuff. Yeah? Yeah, exactly, right? But did you know that this guy would not only record sounds for his work, he would also draw his sounds. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Draw? Sounds? <laughs> what in the actual f- Okay, 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 hold your horses. I'll let them watch this video first, okay? This is my voice. Hey, wait a minute. Let's hold that still and look at it again. Hmm? So that's how my voice looks. Like every other sound, it has its own distinct pattern of light and dark running down the side of the film. Well, if a sound will make a pattern on film, a pattern on film will make a sound. You can even create your own sounds by drawing directly on the film. Norman McLaren, the motion picture artist, has been making some hand-drawn sounds, and now he's going to hear them for the first time, played on the moviola, a sort of miniature movie projector. It's not just guesswork. The sound of any of these patterns of lines can be calculated. The size controls the loudness. A row of small marks would sound like this. Larger marks, a louder sound. That's simple enough. Then there's the tone quality. It's controlled by the shape of the marks. This series of thin, straight lines gives a sharp, rather unpleasant sound. 
but these round dots are a bit smoother. The marks can be any shape you like. Now how about this? Using the brush, Norman tries a row of small triangles. These sharp, angular forms, what would they sound like? The distance the lines are apart controls pitch. With the lines far apart, a low pitch note. A medium and a high note. Now, what can they be used for, these hand-drawn sounds? Well, Norman McLaren finds that they are a perfectly natural accompaniment to some of his hand-drawn motion pictures. Each movement of the screen can have its own specially designed sound. Making movies this way, the artist has direct personal control at every stage of the film's production. Sound and picture are planned and closely related to each other as they are drawn. Now Norman is checking to make sure that each bit of sound is perfectly matched to its accompanying screen action. Finally, the picture and the sound will be printed together on one length of film, and color will be added during the process. So, how are you feeling, man? To be honest, that's pretty cool, man. Maybe cooler than Walt Disney, after all. Uh, you know Walt Disney isn't the only animator on Earth, right? Wait, what? What are you talking about, man? You're speaking gibberish all of a sudden. Okay, 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 enough talking. Take it away, Joms. Thank you, Enzo. I will take it from here. Best known as the director of animation film, Norman McLaren was a pioneer and an inventor throughout his long-distant career. Among his many accomplishments, he developed new ways of thinking about animation, including hand-drawn animation, draw-on film animation, pixelation, and graphic sound. Wait, I have a question. Before we start, where it all begin? Well, the best place to start is during his work with the NFB that McLaren created the most famous piece, the Oscar-winning Neighbors. Despite the running time of 8 minutes and 6 seconds, the film wowed people around the world, picking up the swoo along the award of the Oscars. It was successful, perhaps due to the powerful anti-war film, with a strong social message. Wait, 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 we're talking about animation here, boys. This is a film. What's the film connection to the animation? Well, to answer your question, it's a film, alright, but McLaren used a technique called pixelation. Huh? Pixelation? What is that? Well, pixelation is a stop motion technique where live actors are used to the frame-by-frame -frame subject in animated film. And by rapidly imposing, while one or more frame is taken and change a pose slightly before the next frame or frame. And as a result of that, the actor became a living stop-motion puppet. Oh, I see. Pixelation is amazing! It's like magic! Yes, I know! Isn't it amazing? Okay, for the film soundtrack, which McLaren also created himself, he scratched the edge of the film roll, creating blobs, line, and triangle which the projector read as a sound. Can you get an example of Norman McLaren's work on graphic sound? 
Sure, why not? The best example I get is Began Dual Care with the collaboration of Ebony Lombard and Norman McLaren. You'll see in this work that the painting is like a music note that they play dance playfully. Oh, last question. What is Norman McLaren's legacy? Well, McLaren's legacy is shared between Canada and Scotland, the country of his birthplace. Celebrating screening, exhibition, workshop, and performance that take place around the UK. Celebrating McLaren innovative techniques and creativity spirit. I hope this report helped you guys understand about McLaren's work and legacy. And this is Joms signing out. God bless you all.